All right. Um, so we're going to be making three inch boxes. So you want a three inch little template for you guys. You've already done tiles. So this is very similar to what we started there. Okay. Um, but easier because it's a smaller piece, right? So with the three inch piece, it'll be a lot easier to make your slats. Um, so just as a refresher, once you're getting ready to start, you've got your boards, you've got your rolling pin, you've got your clay. So what do you want to do before you cut out the slats? Do you remember? Yep, we're going to snap it down, flatten it out a little bit, um, give it a wedge, right? If it hasn't been wedged already, give it a minute, work it out. Definitely want to stand for this, don't want to sit. About 30 seconds or so, I've already wedged mine a little bit, but about 30 seconds or so, snap it down and then your rolling pin. And when you're rolling, make sure that you are flipping as you go. Again, this is kind of just review for you guys. Now, when we did our, um, when we did our tiles, we talked about like the thickness that you want for a slab. So you want your thickness to be about between a half an inch and a quarter. This is such a tiny little box that you really don't need like a half an inch. That might be a little thick. So um, when you're thinking about what you want, try for about a quarter. This is about right at a quarter. Obviously a little bit under, a little bit over, you're okay because it's so small. Um, when we make the real thing, between that half an inch and a quarter is what you want, okay? Um, because it'll be bigger, it'll need more support. With this one, you might even be able to get like two out of one roll. So think about how much clay you're using. So I only need one more, so I'm not gonna worry about trying to get two out of it. Again, you don't wanna go too close to the edges because if you go too close and this part might get thinner, we don't want that. So give it a little room. Um, using your blade tool or your needle tool with your ceramic tools. Cut around your template. Give it a quick double check, make sure it's a good thickness. And this is just over a quarter. Okay, so that's just about what we want for the three inch box. Um, we wouldn't want to go any thinner than that for the actual lantern. Okay, maybe a little thicker. Okay, um, so for you guys, you're going to want to um, roll your slabs and then ideally you would let them stiffen up just a little bit before you actually assemble them. Um, so I blow dried mine a little bit so that they stiffen up. Um, if they're fresh out of the bag, sometimes your slabs are still kind of floppy. Um, with the three inch box, it's not as big of a deal, but especially with the lantern, you're going to want it a little bit stiffer because it's going to be bigger. Um, but I'm at a good point. So we'll do, we'll do lids a little later, but for now, um, you want to have your bottom and then your four sides. So you should have five of these little guys. Um, so when you're assembling slabs, getting your first two to fit is the hardest part, right? Because there's like hardly any surface area that's touching. But once you get like your second and your third on, as you go, it's easier and easier because there's more helping it to stabilize. So what you really want to do ideally is you want to try to get, if you can, um, all of your sides up in a day. So roll it one day and then one day really try to get all your sides up or at least two or three. You really don't want to leave it like this because it's probably going to fall over. Okay. Um, so when you assemble your slabs, instead of setting it on top, set it outside. Um, because if you set all of these on top, your slab sizes are going to be wrong, right? Because you're like cutting in the space. So then now there's not enough space for this one. Um, so what is going to happen though, is as you attach, you'll notice like there is a blank spot here. You're going to blend it out. Okay, so don't worry about it. You're going to probably add a little coil in there and you're going to be blending so much that it's going to go away. So don't worry about that. So when you're getting ready to attach, you're going to want to really like score up your surface. 
so that the two pieces can really attach together. So think about where it's going to hit on that side. You can see a little bit closer. It's kind of like a really rough, messy, it doesn't have to be pretty, right? Okay. Um, and then I also have a little bit of slip ready to go if I need it. Um, I just put a little bit of clay in a cup and then added some water so it gets nice and really soft and easy to help. Um, especially with the little boxes, might not be as important with the bigger boxes. When you have more weight that you're trying to attach, it becomes a little bit more important. Okay, so I'm just going to slide them right into each other. And actually, because of the texture, they're already sticking a little bit on their own. So then I'm going to flip my tool head to my wedge. And another thing that's really helpful um, in putting these together are little thin coils. So if you can take a little thin coil of clay and roll it into that corner, that really helps to give it a little bit more support. And then you're going to use this tool to blend it together. So if you've done it successfully, you should no longer have a line between the two sides. It should just look like it flows together. You're going to want to get the inside first. And as always, guys, this is just a demo, so like I would spend more time on this, right? I'm just showing you how to do it basically. Okay, so then once we get that, I can flip it up and then see I still have my crack right here. So I'm going to use my wedge tool, make sure to get the sides. I want the sides to be blended out. And then also the outside. And all things said and done, like that corner is there, right? It doesn't really look like there's a gap anymore because I've blended it all together. Okay. Awesome. So this will be my bottom. And then I'd be ready to attach my, my, my piece. And again, I'm not putting it on top. I'm putting it on the outside. And there still is that little corner space that's free right here. I'm going to connect them right here. So same thing, switch heads, score up the edges. And this one will be even easier to attach because I already have the support of the first side. Same thing, roll a little coil. Um, now at this point, I also have these two sides, right? So like they're meeting. So in addition to um, wanting it to be smooth to the bottom, I also want it to be smooth to that other side. So I'll probably do a little coil here and then also a little coil to join these sides. So anytime you have two pieces attaching, we definitely want to get rid of that crack, give it a little filler. And actually, so now I'm realizing, oh yeah, I should have scored these two because they're going to connect as well. And so forth and flip over to my wedge and then, and then basically you're just continuing the process until you have all four of your sides. Um, we will take, practice making lids just so you guys know how to do it for the lantern. I'm not going to worry about that today. Um, once we have the lids made, um, I'll show you guys how to make a liner for them. Um, and these are just practice, so you guys are welcome to like add little textures to them, draw on them, you know, if you want. Um, practice glazing, practice painting, whatever, like they're your little thing. Um, the, the intent with it is that you feel comfortable doing slabs, so then when you're planning your own um, lantern, you can just roll with it and you already know what you're doing. Now, we're doing boxes. We don't have to do a box for the lantern. If you want to do a four-sided form, 
I always think, you know, the four sided form is very strong. It's probably the easiest one to do. Um, it's not the only one to do. Look at Macy's M over there, right? So that's a slab formation as well. Um, so yours does not have to be um, a box. It might be a pyramid. It could be a hexagon. I mean, don't get too crazy. One year I had someone who wanted to do an octagon, and I was like, okay, let's pump those words just a little bit. Um, but there is some flexibility there. So if you come up with a design that's a little bit outside, huh? outside the box, <laughs> uh, a little outside the box, that's okay, all right? So um, when we come back on Friday, then you guys have your slips. So your goal is going to be trying to get those sides. Um, and then we'll probably flip to lantern planning. Uh, let them leather hard a little bit, and we'll put them together when we come back. Yes. So is it a possibility before you put the slabs together is to like carve out on them because it would be like, right. say you're doing like a big carving, it would sure. be easier to carve out. Yeah, so it kind of depends on what you're doing. Um, there's some, like if you're doing something simple, like for example, if I'm poking dots, you know, like with little stars or something like that, probably better to just wait, right? But yeah, um, like let's say I was doing something really intricate, like maybe I was doing a fairy silhouette or something like that. That would be really challenging to do after the fact. So that might be something you'd want to do before. Yeah. So I would gauge the difficulty of the hole you plan to cut out. And if it is something that where it's going to be a lot easier to draw on it this way and cut it out and remove it that way, that's okay too. Um, you just want to be really careful with it because you, it would be awful to spend all that time and then have it break before you can assemble. Yep. Good? Cool. All right. Well, we'll come back on Friday then and roll those and start lantern plating. Bye, friends. <laughs> See you later.